I never thought it would happen to me. I always felt safe in my own home, never realizing the danger that was lurking just outside my door. But then, I became the target of a serial killer. It started with strange phone calls. The person on the other end of the line would breathe heavily and whisper obscene things. At first, I thought it was just a prank caller, but then the calls became more frequent and more threatening. One night, I heard a noise outside my window. I peeked through the blinds, but I couldn't see anything. I brushed it off as my imagination and went back to bed, but then I heard the noise again. This time I saw a figure lurking in the shadows. I called the police, but they couldn't find anything. They told me to be more vigilant and to call again if anything else happened. But then it escalated. I came home from work one day to find my front door wide open. My heart raced as I stepped inside, calling out for anyone who might be there. But there was no answer, only the sound of my own footsteps echoing in the empty house. Then I saw it. A note, left on my kitchen counter. It was written in a spidery handwriting, and it read, I'm coming for you. My blood turned to ice as I realized the gravity of the situation. Someone was targeting me, someone who wanted to hurt me. I tried to stay calm to carry on with my daily routine, but every sound made me jump, every shadow made me feel uneasy. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Then one night, I heard a knock on my door. I hesitated for a moment, but then I opened it. And that's when I saw him, the serial killer, standing on my doorstep holding a knife. I screamed and tried to slam the door shut, but he pushed his way inside. I fought him off as best I could, but he was too strong. I could feel the cold steel of the knife against my skin, and I knew I was going to die. But then, the police arrived. They had been following him, tracking him down. They saved my life that night, but the experience left me traumatized. I never felt safe again always looking over my shoulder, wondering if the killer would come back. It's been years since that night, and I've done my best to move on. I've sought therapy and support for my loved ones, but the memories still haunt me, and I can't help but feel a sense of unease whenever I'm alone. I've always been fascinated by old abandoned buildings, so when I heard about an abandoned asylum on the outskirts of town, I knew I had to check it out. I gathered some friends and we made plans to explore the place. As we approached the asylum, I could feel a sense of dread creeping up on me. The building was massive, with boarded up windows and a rusted gate, but I pushed the feeling aside and led my friends towards the entrance. As we stepped inside, I could hear the sound of footsteps echoing in the halls. It was as if the building was alive, breathing and watching us. We started exploring our flashlights illuminating the dark rooms and hallways. But then, we heard it. A faint whisper, almost like a child's voice. We followed the sound, creeping through the halls until we found ourselves in the basement. That's when I saw her. She was a little girl, dressed in a tattered white dress. Her face was pale, and her eyes were hollow. She was standing in front of a door, whispering to herself. We tried to talk to her, but she wouldn't respond. Then suddenly, she vanished into thin air. We were all spooked, but we brushed it off as our imaginations playing tricks on us. That is, until we heard the screams. They were coming from the door the little girl had been standing in front of. We rushed towards it, but it wouldn't budge. We could hear something scratching at the door, and the screams grew louder and more desperate. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest and I knew we had to get out of there. But as we turned to leave, the door suddenly swung open. A dark figure emerged, and I could see its eyes glowing in the darkness. We ran as fast as we could, with the figure pursuing us. We could hear it breathing down our necks, its footsteps echoing in the hallways. I was certain we were going to die, but then we made it to the exit. We burst out into the daylight, panting and shaking. We never went back to that asylum again, but the memory of that night still haunts me, and I can't help but wonder what would have happened if we had stayed just a little longer. I have always been an independent person, enjoying the freedom of living alone in my small apartment, but that all changed when I started noticing strange occurrences around my home. 
At first, it was small things, like objects being moved or missing, but it quickly escalated. One day, I received a package at my doorstep with no return address. Inside was a picture of myself sleeping in my bed, taken from outside my window. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me, and I began to feel like I was being stalked. At night, I would hear faint footsteps outside my door, and sometimes I would see a shadowy figure lurking in the hallway. It was like a nightmare come to life. I couldn't escape it. I tried to reach out for help, but no one believed me. They said it was all in my head, and that I was just being paranoid. But I knew the truth. I knew someone was watching me, and I was terrified. As the days went by, the stalking became more aggressive. I would find notes left for me at my workplace, warning me to watch my back. My phone would ring late at night with no one on the other end. I couldn't take it anymore. I started to lose sleep and became a shadow of my former self. I knew I needed to take action before it was too late. I set up cameras around my apartment, hoping to catch a glimpse of my stalker. And then one night, I saw him. He was watching me through my bedroom window, just like in the picture he had sent me. I called the police, and they were able to catch the stalker. It turned out to be someone I knew from work, someone who had become obsessed with me. It was a relief to know that I was safe, but the horror of the experience stayed with me. I now live in a new apartment, but I still feel like I'm being watched sometimes. The memories of my stalker still haunt me, and I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to escape them completely.